Fear of missing out has businesses trying to figure out how to best enable their employees with AI. In response, they're mobilizing with AI committees, task forces that are assigned to figure out a company's internal response to make employees more efficient with AI. When I first heard about this, it was twice in the same day. An AI committee? You know, one of those AI committees? What's an AI committee? So I sent out a tweet asking, who's involved with AI committees? And 12 awesome people responded. What I found out was amazing. The companies that had an intentional plan for rolling out AI to their workforce saw more productivity, way better customer data safety, and top line revenue growth. This video is a recap of what I learned about what the best AI committees are doing. My name is Greg Camrad, and I'm on a mission to figure out how businesses will create more value using AI. Let's get started with four key findings and recommendations. First, get serious. Like any good program, leadership buy-in on AI is key. The best committees had the backing of their CEO as a formal program within the company. They also had each one of their departments represented. This group met once every two weeks to share workflows, celebrate and evangelize wins, and bring up new experiments to try. Next, manage expectations. During the peak hype of the AI craze, marketing would make you believe that AI was going to completely replace workers. The reality is, the role that AI should play is to augment existing workflows not necessarily replace them. The best AI committees understood that AI shouldn't be left unchecked. They shouldn't be allowed to run without human intervention. Instead of hoping that AI will transform your business overnight, start with smaller wins. What repetitive tasks are you doing that AI might be able to make you more efficient with? Start with scoped down specific tasks. Saying you want a chat GPT to replace your sales order entry system is like trying to boil the ocean. Instead, start with simple tasks like drafting customer response emails or classifying inbound support requests. Next, enablement. The best AI committees put their employees into a position where they could safely experiment with AI and report back their findings. I love the Sam Altman clip that refers to collective intelligence. The collective intelligence and ability of the outside world helps us discover things we cannot imagine we could have never done internally. The same goes for your employee base. Employees should have a secure chat GPT like experience that isn't being expensed on their personal card. Then you need to invest in training. Your team should understand what tasks language models are good at and which ones they aren't good at. And beware, language models will act like they're good at everything. Your employees should also have a basic common sense training to learn the do's and don'ts of language models. Don't hope your employees will learn the best practices. Instead, be intentional with their training. Do you need inspiration on what AI workflows to experiment with? Try one of these methods. First, the bottoms up method. Start by brainstorming with your team and crowdsource workflows that they think AI might be able to help with. In the end, you should have a list of hundreds of ideas you can prioritize and pick which ones to formally try out. Or the tops down method. Start with a thesis on how you think AI will impact your business based on macro trends. Make predictions and work backwards into understanding which actions you should take now. After a quick break, we'll go into my final learning on AI committees and I'll share some of my favorite use cases I learned throughout the process. So stick around, we'll be right back. If you've been following me for a while, you know how much I love easy to set up and out of the box functionality in just a few lines of code, which is why I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Single Store. Single Store powers fast, real-time analytics powered AI applications. You can easily store vectors for a semantic search, get started in your language of choice and even expand your data outside of vectors with support for structured, semi-structured, time series, full text, spatial, and key value data. Seriously, if you have a range of data, they can store it. The best part, they even have notebooks directly in the browser that you can connect to your database with. No need to hassle with connections. When you get logged on to Single Store, you can get an easy web browser interface, real-time monitoring, and familiar SQL tooling. Single Store makes it easy to get set up. With up to $600 in free credit when you get started, they have integrations right into Langchain and one-on-one -on -one support from one of their experts if you have questions. Single Store is for anyone who's looking to get started with a no-brainer database solution in order to power their AI applications. It's perfect for indie devs, data engineers, and companies looking to explore new data options. It's being used by analytics companies, Fortune 500s, and some of today's biggest consumer apps. That includes DBT for their use of real-time analytics and Heap who uses Single Store as the query layer on top of their customer facing data systems. Single Store is the platform for low latency access to massive data sets. If you're interested in learning more, links in the description. Finally, reflect and retro. I saw the best AI committees would not 
have AI shiny object syndrome and build every cool thing that seemed appetizing. Rather, they would reflect first. Should they build a solution in-house for their team? Should they buy from an existing vendor that can fit their needs? Or should they wait to see the market mature before they made a decision? They also had a great handle on whether or not AI was actually having an impact within their org. This meant quantitatively measuring their outputs. Could they process more customer support requests? What about writing more blog posts, but also qualitatively checking to see if things were getting better? Did employees feel more productive? Did communication increase? How would your team feel if you took AI away? Let's wrap up with a few fun use cases that interview shared. One interview used AI to generate first drafts of localized marketing content for 450 franchises. The quality still needed refinement, but it allowed for faster drafting. Or one of my favorite use cases, a company's employee turned from copywriter to copy chief now that they were reviewing drafts of copy instead of looking at a blank page. Not only did the employee's happiness go up, but their value to the company increased too. At the end of the day, AI has unlocked an entire new set of capabilities for businesses. However, the fun part is that we're still figuring out which ones will stick. That's the mission that I'm on, and I'm excited to journey with you. If you'd like to chat more about your specific use cases, contact me for a one-on-one -on -one about how your business can begin to roll out AI tools, start an AI committee, or hear about other case studies. And speaking of case studies, if you'd like to hear about how one of the best AI enabled companies out there, Zapier, is enabling their employees with AI, you'll wanna check out my interview with Mike Noop, co-founder of Zapier. We had a great conversation about what they're doing internally to get over 50% of their employees working with AI for, as he puts it, on actually useful things.